prayer the benefits of a consist of a consistent prayer life the benefits of a consistent prayer life you know we we have to be consistent you know and and, and it's going to take some discipline now understand now in order to be consistent you're going to have to be disciplined you know uh man i i can't thank god enough for the many many things he's doing in my life and how he's kept me and continuing to keep me and you too can say the same now you might not be where you want to be but you ought to be happy you're not where you used to be you ought to be happy that my god in spite of the trouble I might be looking at, in spite of the things that I might be going through, I can truly say, Lord, I thank you. Because I recognize and realize that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, thank you, Jesus. As I said the other day, prayer moves the hand that moves the world. Man, prayer moves the hand that moves the world. Lord, and you know that song we were singing, he's got the whole world in his hands. And my sister, my brother, I want you to know God got you in his hands. God got you in his hands. I want to start off with Daniel chapter six, starting at the third verse. And uh, it's going to be some reading, but I believe the Lord's going to bless us in today. Daniel chapter 3, starting at the third verse. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an ex excellent spirit was on him, in him. And the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. So the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find no charge or fault because he was faithful. He was faithful. Why? Because he was a man of God. Why? Because he was consistent. Mm, mm, mm. And we're going to get to that now. He was consistent in prayer. Because he was faithful, nor was, was there any error or fault found in him. Oh, he was, he was, he, he was living the life. Then these men said, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. So these governors and satraps thronged before the king. They gathered around before the king. They, they pushed in on the king and said this to him, King Darius, live forever. Trying to puff the king up now. King Darius, live forever. All the governors of the kingdom, the administrators and satraps, the counselors, advisors have consulted together to establish a royal statue and to make a firm decree that whoever petitions any god or man for 30 days, except you, they wanted to make King Darius a god, Lord Jesus. O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter, cannot be altered. In other words, once that king signed that decree, it cannot be changed, cannot be changed. Wanted everybody to lift up King Darius for 30 days. And that's how they was going to be able to, to trick Daniel. Why? Because they know Daniel was consistent. He had a consistent prayer life. Therefore, the ninth verse says, therefore, King Darius signed the written decree. He signed the written decree. You know, and, and I would dare say the problem with many in the body of Christ is the fact that they do not have a consistent prayer life, a consistent prayer life. See, we just can't pray when the problem shows up. We just can't pray because things might not be going the way we want it to. We just can't pray because money's funny, change is strange. We just can't pray because I, I, 
I was in an argument with a family member. I was in an argument with a friend. I was in an argument with somebody at my church. I, see, prayer is something to be done, you know, good times, bad times, at all times. Are you hearing me? Uh, uh, pray without ceasing. And then mainly because, you know, many are lacking the faithfulness and the commitment needed to talk to the Lord daily. I'm talking about talking to him in prayer. See, prayer is a vehicle that, 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 that just opens up the floodgates of heaven. Prayer is a vehicle that can bring relief. Prayer is a vehicle that can, ooh, man, that can, that can give you back that sanity that you need because there are things going on in our lives that will cause us to, to, to want, man, am I going to make it? I mean, if it wasn't for no bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. What's going on? And I'm going to church, I'm praying, I'm reading scripture, and I'm still dealing with stuff. Hey, we're living in a fallen world. But Daniel was a man who always prayed to God. See, Daniel prayed to God every day. Not once a day, not twice a day, but Daniel prayed to God three times a day. And he did that every day. You talk about consistent, a consistency, this brother was sold out. I mean, hey, well, you know, he was, he was, you know, we know he was uh, a slave captive brought in from, from, from Judah. You know, Judah is praised. That brother loved to praise God. He loved to talk to God. And nothing, are you hearing me? Nothing was going to change his program. He didn't care who, you know, uh, who what the decree said. He, he wasn't going to let anything or anybody change his agenda. His agenda was to constantly seek the Lord in prayer, not once, not twice, but three times a day. And he did that every day. Daniel would consistently seek the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. See, and three times a day, every day, Daniel would do what? He would bow down on his knees. Now, yeah, see, he had uh, you know, he, he he would he would bow down on his knees to pray, to worship, and to praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Man, I mean, praise God. Thank God. My God. My God. See, that, you know, we, we got to be able to see the importance of prayer. Prayer is, I mean, prayer, prayer, I, I wouldn't exchange prayer for anything in this world, in this life. Because I realize prayer will also build a man, build a woman up. And I mean, there's going to be times, and I would dare say more times in our lives, when we will just be, you know, at a place where we are where we are feeling less than. And I just need a helping hand. I, I need someone to encourage me. I, I need someone to, to just speak a word of, uh, a word that can enlighten me, that can Help me to, to go through whatever it is I'm going through because all of us going to go through something. But Daniel, Daniel was consistent. Not only was he consistent, I would even dare say he was persistent. Even after he heard about the decree that the king signed, Daniel never altered. Did you hear what I said? He never altered. He never changed or he never stopped seeking the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, that brother, you know, he was, he was totally committed to God in prayer. He was determined to do what got him to the dance. See, because, see, you see, 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 understand, he loved to be in his presence. See, the Bible says in his presence is fullness of joy. We're talking about in, the, in, in God's presence. See, when you go one-on-one -on -one with God and you come into his presence, man. I mean, I, I think about the time when, when, when Moses went up on that mountain and he prayed them 40 days and, and that, brother, that brother came down off that mountain and the Bible says his face was such a glow, nobody could even look at him in the face because he was all lit up like a light bulb. Uh, see, see, but but so many of us in the in the body of Christ, we're sad. Our light is dim. Why? Because we don't spend enough time with God in prayer. 
we look at more television we're on facebook we're on we're on all these social media apps we're we're doing this we're on the t we spend more time on the telephone talking to people that can't do anything for us than we do with the lord or with the god that is able to do more than enough for each and every one of us see god will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in christ jesus see and when you look at when you look at daniel now he was a captive slave living under persian rule under persian law and so on and so forth but because daniel had an excellent spirit he was promoted by darius the king to become one of three governors to be over 120 satraps now now you might say what is a satrap what is a satrap now so uh, the satraps were put in place to protect the king's possessions so, and, and and daniel was going to be given the responsibility of, of 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 watching even over them to make sure that they carried out their responsibilities and duties see but god my god my god god bless daniel see god bless daniel and you know i think so much about that uh, about joseph's story how god kept joseph when he was going through and you can see a parallel you can see a similarity you know how god was able to move uh in, in in the lives of these men why because they were committed to him in prayer they had a relationship with him in prayer they were consistent in prayer and when you're consistent in prayers there's going to be some benefits benefits god's benefits far outweigh anything that the world can give you anything that the world can offer you so god blessed daniel and gave him favor with king darius gave him favor with king darius if you remember nebuchadnezzar died and belzazar uh took up the anyway things was going on in in the kingdom and 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 and, and darius wanted someone that was able to interpret the dream and 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 to let him know you know uh, uh uh what to do so on and so forth and and matter of fact his wife paul uh said well 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 uh this daniel he helped nebuchadnezzar but if you remember nebuchadnezzar he 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 lifted himself up to be like a king and he became like an animal he was out there uh uh, uh you know he, he just his nails grew he he just went crazy why because he wanted to make himself something that he wasn't hey no man is a king bigger than the king of kings and the lord of lords and 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 and, and nebuchadnezzar went crazy out there belzazar he took over and then belzazar he too was messed up because he want he wanted to run the kingdom like he was a god see but uh, King Darius, he sought he sought someone that can give him an interpretation of the vision and the dream. And 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 as I said, his wife, the queen, the queen came in and said, "Well, this Daniel, he interpreted uh, the dreams for Nebuchadnezzar, and I think he can do the same for you." And this is how uh, uh, Daniel was put in a position where he was able to gain the favor and the blessings of God over his life. And, 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 and Darius, you know, he, he blessed him. He blessed him. Why? Because God set him up to be blessed. God will set you up to be blessed when you can, when you can, let's just say, be consistent in your prayer life. I'm talking about, I'm talking about daily. And there's times when we're going to have to come before the Lord more than coming before him in the morning when we wake up. Yeah, I wake up in the morning and I say, Lord, I thank you. I, I thank you. I was able to pass through another night and come into another day, a day I've never seen before. But it doesn't stop there because things are going to happen during the course of that day that you're going to need to talk to God. You're going to have to make some space, some time to, to talk with him and seek his face more so than his hand. You have many in the body of Christ seeking his hand coming before him with the gimme, gimme, gimme's. 
And God is saying, man, don't you know I'm more than that? Don't you know I'm able to do uh, uh, greater? Don't you know I'm able to bless you exceedingly and abundantly above what you can ask or think? Let, 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 let me do what I do. And if you can just let God do what he do and you not try to be bigger than God, you not try to set yourself up for, you know, let God set you up. Let God position you. Let God, ooh, Lord Jesus. See, but in order to do these things now, you have to have a consistent prayer life. See, and God blessed Daniel and gave him favor with King Darius, who set him up with a position of power and, 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 and power to do what? To rule in his kingdom, in Darius's kingdom. See, and Darius thought it would be better to set Daniel up over the whole realm. That sounds something like Joseph, how the king, how Pharaoh put him over the whole realm during a time when the world was without food. Why? Because it didn't rain. Because the mere fact everything was <laughs> kaput, famished. And, 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 and we realize and recognize that God will give the man, the woman of God, the answer in reference to going forward on how to live their life and how to be a blessing and a benefit to others. See, you don't just want to be a blessing to yourself. See, and until you can see, know, and understand that this is bigger than you. This is bigger than you. This is about being a blessing to, to, to others, those that you know you, those that you don't know, those that need to know about this man named Jesus, those that need to know about our great God. And I mean, Darius, King Darius wanted to set him over the whole realm. But what happened now, and that's what's going to happen because people going to get jealous. People going to get jealous, but the officials were jealous of Daniel. And they knew that they would not be able to find him guilty of doing anything wrong because he was fully committed to God. He was sold out. He was not just talking the talk, he was walking the walk. Are you hearing me? He was locked in, thank you, Jesus. And when you're locked in, you're locked and loaded, and I'm here to tell you, no weapon that is formed against you gonna prosper. See, now these, these uh, 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 let's just say officials, you know, these satraps and others, they, they, they wanted to try to find an error or something that Daniel would do wrong so that they can, uh, let's just say, get him out of the favor of King Darius. They, they, they didn't want a captive. He was a captive. And, and here we've been here all, you know, all our life, but he's a captive brought in from Judah. And you want to put him over us? I'm here to tell you now, jealousy is real. Jealousy is real. So what happened? And they, First of all, they knew they wasn't able to find anything wrong with, with, with Daniel, so they plotted and schemed against him. And they knew that he would pray three times a day. They knew his schedule, just like when Judas betrayed Jesus, he knew he went to the Mount of Olives and, and would be praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. That was something that he did, you know, on a daily basis. So they knew his program. See, the enemy is watching you. The enemy understands your, you know, your, your movement. He understands and he knows what you love to do and what you don't like to do. He knows and he's looking and studying you so he can know how he can gain, let's just say, an advantage over you. And these men wanted to gain an advantage over Daniel and they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it with this God. So they had to do it with, with the king, with King Darius. So they figured out if they made a decree had to de and have uh, Darius sign that decree, then they will be able to, 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 to catch Daniel in a fault. Why? Because Daniel going to still be praying to his God because they knew that this was something that was, that was sown into his heart. See, prayer has to be sown into your heart. I love the Lord so much. I mean, I, got, I just got to have a little talk with him. There's no way in the world I'm going to go through a day and not talk to God. 
I'm not going to wake up in the morning and go eat my breakfast. I'm not going to wake up in the day. I'm not going to, you know, work in the, you know, go to work, go to a job and, and come home in the evening and safe and sound and, and not give him thanks. I, I'm not going to thank him for my, you mean, I'm not going to thank him for my children. I'm not going to thank him for my marriage. I'm not going to thank him for my job. I'm not going to thank him for my health. I'm not going to, I mean, it's so much to be thankful for because when you look around, my God, my God. Sometimes all you got to do is look around and you can see how God has blessed you. You know, sometimes we focus so much on the problem, so much on the stuff that we're going through that we don't realize that, man, somebody wish they had half of what you got. They wish they had half of what you have, but God has blessed you. You know, and you got to be able to see the importance in spite of what you might be going through. I'm going, I'm going, I'm just going, I'm just going to move in that thankfulness, thankfulness. That's one of the acts, thankfulness, making supplication, confession. Oh my God, my God, my God. Well, because I recognize and realize that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, on your side, I'm talking about our soon coming king. Or I'm talking about the lily of the valley, the bright morning star. I'm talking about the one that can do anything but fail. Are you hearing me? And Daniel was committed to God in prayer. I don't care how much you plot and scheme against me or against, that's what he was saying. I'm, you can plot and scheme all you want. I'm going to still pray. See, and, and, and these, these officials, they persuaded the king to pass a law. For forbidding prayer to anyone but to Darius, are you hearing me, for 30 days, and they knew it was no way in the world Daniel would be able to not pray to, to, to his God for 30 days. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, no bet. If you're going to pray, pray to King Darius. Don't pray to your God. And, 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 they, mm -mm, and they knew they would be able to find faults in that. So they were going to use that to get uh, Daniel in the lion's den. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we getting to that. We getting to that. See, and once the decree became law, it could not be changed. You see, 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 you know, these, these men, man, they, they were shrewd. They had a plan and they were working their plan. And the real deal is they was they was trying to get to a place where, hey, I didn't want no 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 man from Judah who was brought into captivity to be over us. Uh-uh. And jealousy, Lord Jesus. Why? Because the favor of God was on Daniel's life. The favor of God can be over over you and on your life if you were more consistent in your prayer life. <laughs> I, 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 it's as simple as that you see and I would dare say that you know we're being challenged today God is challenging us today to be a little bit more consistent to be a little bit more committed are you hearing me because hey it's nothing like spending time with the Lord in prayer it's nothing like spending time with the Lord in prayer let's look at Daniel chapter 6 in the 10th verse. Let's go a little bit deeper now, because now we're going into the plot and the scheme to get him into, the, to get Daniel, let me make it plain, to get Daniel in the lion's den. See, but they don't know, boy, God's got a plan. He gonna work all things together for the good. Daniel chapter six, verse 10 says, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room, See, you got to have an upper room in your house, Lord Jesus. Right now, I'm in my upper room. Thank you, Jesus. I'm in my upper room. See, and you got to be able to get in your upper room. And, and, and look what he says. And with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day. And we're talking about three times a day, every day, and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since early days. He was doing that all his life. Are you hearing me? Nothing, I mean, he was committed. He was consistent in his prayer life. 
Are you hearing me? And, and then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Uh-oh. They found him out. They knew that's what he was going to do. It's not like, you know, they didn't know. They knew that this was what Daniel was going to do because he did this every day. So let me go down to the 12th verse. And the 12th verse says, and they went before the king and spoke concerning the king's decree. Have you not signed a decree that every man who petitions any God or man within 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? And the king answered and said, the thing is true. That's right, I did. I signed that decree. According to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which does not alter. In other words, you can't change this thing according to the law of the Medes and the Persians. So they answered and said before the king that Daniel, who is one of the captives from Judah, does not show due regard for you. In other words, King Darius, he's not respecting you as king because he's still praying to his God. And then, and then let me finish reading this. He says, or for the decree that you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day to his God. And the king, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself for, for signing that decree because he didn't realize that, you know, these men were trying to set Daniel up. Now he probably realized, oh, okay, because everybody know that this is what Daniel did. And set his heart, the king, King Darius set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. So even the king wanted to release Daniel from this situation that Daniel found himself in. Because the king loved Daniel. He loved Daniel. He had a love for Daniel. See, but look at this. Then these men approached the king and said to the king, Know, O king, that it is the law of the Medes and Persians that no decree or statue which the king establishes may be changed. They pushed in on the king. They wanted to make sure he was going to live up to the decree and to the statues of the law that was set up by the Medes and the Persians. In other words, they wanted to place the uh, man's law over God's law. Thank you, Jesus. As I said on yesterday, we are commanded to pray. That's a command. God wants you to pray. He want to have a talk. See, that proves relationship. Daniel had a relationship with God in prayer. Are you hearing me? And we as believers, we in the body of Christ, those of us who call ourselves saints of the most high God, believers, we should be talking to the Lord in prayer. And I would dare say more than one time, thank you, Jesus. There's always something to pray for. There's always somebody to pray for. Thank you, Jesus, if not for yourself. And just thanking God. I'm just grateful, just thankful, so blessed. Let's look at the 16th verse. So the king gave the command, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, Your God, whom you serve? continually. That's a key word right there. Continually. Why? Because Daniel was consistent in prayer. Consistent. And not just consistent, but as I said earlier, he was persistent. Nothing was going to change or alter what he did when it comes to prayer and meeting with his God in prayer three times a day. And, and, and the king, King Darius said now, your God who you serve, he going to deliver you. He going to deliver you now. And, and, and then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signets of his lords so that the purpose concerning Daniel might not be changed. Daniel was now in the lion's, the lion's den. The, in the den filled with lions. And, the, and you would think these lions were hungry, hungry, hungry. 
See, and, 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 and look at this. Look at this now. Look at this. The 18th verse says, Now the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting. I mean, even the king started fasting. The king couldn't eat. Why? Because he was... He was in he was in mourning for, for Daniel. He 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 was in, in 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 sorrow for Daniel because you know he 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 didn't want Daniel to be at this place where his life was in jeopardy because he was in a den filled with lions. And look what he says. And no musicians were brought before him. Also his sleep went from him. So the king couldn't sleep. He didn't want to hear no music. He didn't want no festivities. He didn't want to eat. That brother was saddened because he had a love for the man of God. You see, and I'm here to tell you now, there's some folk around you that love you. I mean, they love you so much, boy, that when you're not at that place where you should be or could be, hey, they're going to be grieving over you. They're going to lose sleep over you. Are you hearing me? Know that, oh my God, you're that one that can make a difference. Dan, you made a difference in King Darius's life. And I'm here to tell you today, you're that one that can make a difference in someone's life, whether it's a spouse, a child, a family member, your church, your pastor. Are you hearing me? Someone in your community, someone, hey, hey, you are that one that can make a difference. And, and, and look at what it says now in the morning. See, the 19th verse says, then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel, a sad voice, a sad voice, because he thought that Daniel might have been eaten up by the lions. And the king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to deliver you from the lions? And then Daniel said to the king, listen to this now. O king, live forever. O king, live forever. You see, and, and, and my God, my God sent his angels and shut the lion's mouths so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. See, he was found innocent before God, but he was also innocent even before even King Darius. And also, O oh king, I have done no wrong before you. Now the king was exceedingly glad. The king was exceedingly glad. Are you hearing me? The king was exceedingly glad. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You see, and you have to be able to see now that God had a plan and he had a purpose. In, in, in other words, to show that he is the God of more than enough. He's the God who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what any of them mm, 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 can ever plot, scheme, plan. Anyone who wanted to design some hurt for, 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 for Daniel, that same hurt was going to come back against them because they were going to eventually end up in the lion's den themselves. I mean, those lions turned into kittens while Daniel was in that lion's den. Daniel could have ran around patting them, rubbing them, and, and they would be purring and just, you know, I mean, it was just a, a, a you know, it was just a good, it was a, it was a, a time of fellowship. Are you hearing me? Daniel was fellowshipping with the lions all night long. And I would dare say now, those lions were probably hungry. They was hungry, but but I'm talking about God taking the hunger away from the lions. He took the hunger. He he pulled the hunger out of the lions and gave them an inner peace. Oh, no, you don't need to mess with this man. Are you hearing me? See, when I talk about God being king of kings and lord of lords, he's not just over the, he's not just lord of the land, lord of the sea. He's Lord over everything, over everything. Are you hearing me? Over all the animals, over all apes. I wonder why he's not Lord over you. And I'm, I'm not talking to those of you who are in Christ, but those of you who have not made him Lord and Savior, I wonder why he's not over Lord over your life. 
See, and I'm talking about a God that can do anything but fail. You see, and, and, and now the king was exceedingly glad for Daniel and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no injury whatsoever was found on him because he believed in his God. Thank you, Jesus. You see? And and look at what happened now. This is what happened to, to, the, to the men that was plotting and scheming. And the king gave the command and they brought those men who had accused Daniel and they cast them into the den of lions them, their children, and their wives, and the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces before they ever came to the bottom of the den. In other words, those lions got that appetite back. Lord Jesus, they got their appetite back. But their ap they didn't have an appetite for Daniel, but they sure had an appetite for those officials who plotted and schemed and accused Daniel. And you know what was so messed up? See, we have to realize now, when we make these bad choices, we don't just affect ourselves. As it said in this particular verse, the 24th verse, it said their children and their wives were also overpowered mm, 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 by those lions. See, and, and then King Darius wrote a new decree. To all people, nations, and languages that dwell in the earth, peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men must tremble in fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever. His kingdom is one which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall endure to the end. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm talking about mm, 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 a God that can't lie, can't die. Water can't drown him. Fire can't burn him up and time can't wear him out. I'm talking about our soon coming king. Are you ready to meet up with your soon coming king? Are you hearing me today? Because he's coming back now and he's coming back for a church without spot or blemish. And I want to be ready. I want to be prepared to see my savior, thank you, Jesus. And look what king, the king went on to say now, because he wasn't through. He says, he says in the 27th verse, he delivers and rescues and he works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. And if he's able to deliver Daniel, I'm here to tell you, my sister, I'm here to tell you, my brother, he's able to deliver you. Are you hearing me? See, and I'm talking about he's working, he's, he's working everything, all things together for the good, not just in heaven, but also in the earth. And God want to work in your life. He want to work in your family. He want to work in your finances. He want to work in when it comes to your health. And hey, there's nothing mm, going on in your life that God is not concerned about. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius the king and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. See, and God wants you to prosper and be in good health. God wants you to be blessed. Oh, my God, my God. See, I, I, no weapon. The Bible says no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And there's going to be some people that are jealous about what you're doing and what you're able to do because, you know, some some will favor you over others and so on and so forth. And you have to know that irregardless of, of, of what, you know, all the population might be doing, irregardless of the decrees and laws that might be put in place by man, I'm going to stick with God's law. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick and I'm going to walk that word of God. I'm going to walk that word of God. I'm going to live out the word of God. I'm solely committed. Um, oh, are you here? You want to be solely committed and you want to be persistent. Nothing can separate you from the love of your God. God so loved you. He so loved you. Thank you, Jesus, that he's not going to let anything. Now, I'm not going to say stuff not going to come. I'm not going to say you're not going to find yourself in some situations that are difficult, situations that will cause you to wonder, Lord, I don't see you, this, that, that, and this. 
but know the Lord is with you and know he's working behind the scenes in your life and know God's got your best interests at heart. He's always working all things together for the good. So in spite of what you might be dealing with, my sister, hold to his hands, hold to God's unchanging hands and know that God is about to do a new thing. See, hey, God want to favor you. God want to favor you, see? And the benefits of a consistent prayer life is favor. Mm, mm -mm. God will favor you. He will give you favor with those who, 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 who want to, let's just say, who, who can have rule over you. God will give you favor in your community, give you favor on your job. God will put it in your pastor, put it in members or fellowship or ministry that you might be a part of. They can see the favor of God, the hand of God on your life. And what and you know what that means? God is setting you up to be used in a very special way. Going back to Joseph, look at the difference that Joseph made. You know, you get, hey, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I mean, God is just amazing. And all of us are going to be tried. All of us are going to go through. And all the enemy want to do is to separate you from you, from the God that you say you love. You say you love the Lord? Well, we're going to see. Because you can talk a good talk, but your walk might not be lining up with what you're talking. But when you're persistent and consistent, and then you can see the benefits of God. So even though you might end up, you know, standing before a Goliath, dealing with a a giant, a Philistine giant, guess what? You can bring him down. Why? Because you look back over your life and you realize I slayed the lion and I slayed the bear. Why? Because the Lord was with me. And if I can slay a lion and slay a bear, guess what? I can slay this Philistine giant. And it, oh, see, but, but what you got to do now is you got to get that kind of heart. Matter of fact, David said, create me a clean heart, O oh God, renew a right spirit within me. My God, my God, nothing should separate you from the love that you have for your God. And God will give you victory. God will give you victory and he will release the benefits of you having a consistent prayer life. Are you hearing me? Someone who is willing to talk to the Lord, not just once, not just twice, but three times a day. And that's what Daniel did. And God is calling us to up our game into, let's just say, to get to a place. Like I said on yesterday, take your prayer life to the next level. It's about taking your prayer life to the next level. You want to see change? You want to, or, or let's just say, change some things in your life, your relationships and so on and so forth? Well, take your prayer life to the next level. Because there is power in prayer. There is po See, prayer releases the power of God over your life. And God will do a new thing if you let him. Are you hearing me? See, and you will prompt him to move and to do when you are consistent in your prayer life. Ooh, I, I mean, I think I said enough. I don't, I don't know what more I can say to prove God, to be everything that he says he is. And more than that. That's the God that you say you love. That's the God that we talk about each and every day. Prayer does move the hand that moved the world. And God want to move in your life today. I love you. But as much as I love you, know the Lord loves you even more. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Dear God, dear Father, we just want to say thank you today. And Father God, I just pray even now, oh God, that the words that were shared today, Lord God, would be received in the heart of the listener, in the heart of the viewer. And I pray right now, Father God, that you will anoint us afresh and anew. Oh God, help us, Lord God, to go to the next level in our prayer life. Help us to be a little bit more faithful, a little bit more committed to you, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to find that consistency that is needed, Lord God, for the breakthroughs that we're desiring in our lives. And Father God, we just want to say thank you for loving on us, loving on us the way you do. 
thanking your father, God, because we recognize and realize that if it had not been for you, oh God, truly you are Lord over our lives. And we love you today, Lord God. And we're thankful today, Lord God, because we know, God, that even though some might not see your hand in the midst of their situations, we know your heart is forever with us. And we want to thank you, Lord, for being that God that does not change, that God that cannot lie, that God that cannot die, but that God who is faithful and committed to his people. And I thank you, Lord, for being committed to this prayer line. I thank you, Father God, for each and every family represented on this line. I thank you, Father God, for each and every family represented, Lord God, on, on our uh, YouTube channel, those that would come and fellowship daily. I pray that you bless them real good. Press down, shaking together, and, and let that blessing overflow. And Lord God, I pray, Father, that bodies will be healed, minds will be changed, and spirits will be lifted. Oh God, bring them to a place of deeper understanding. Pour your wisdom into your people, Lord God. Bless them real good, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we'll forever be grateful and thankful for all of what you've done and all of what you're going to continue to do in all of our lives. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Oh, praise the Lord, saints. Love you so much. Come on back. I'm talking to those on YouTube. Come on back tomorrow, same time, same place, and let the Lord drop a word in your spirit. Love you real good now. Have a great day.